How's it going, guys? We have a difficult question for endocrine step one, internal family medicine 2CK. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads. Melman underscore medical, MHL, man underscore medical links down below. If you mean Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Let's start the clip. 69 year old woman, she simply has her PTH calcium on this graph here. And I literally made a very similar clip, I don't know, maybe a week ago. All right. And um, very similar question shows up on the NBME exam. Don't know what to tell you. So let's just hop to the answer choice here. Not dramatic. Choice say hypoparathyroidism instantaneously, wrong fucking answer, because clearly calcium would be low, not high in uh, hypoparathyroidism, right? So we have high calcium here, although PTH, sure, it's low. So parathyroid hormone is going to increase blood calcium in three ways. Number one, it's going to go to bone. Then we have the whole elaborate mechanism where it binds PTH receptor on the osteoblast. And even though the osteoblast normally builds bone, holy shit, it's going to cause the osteoblast to express rank L, which will bind a rank receptor on osteoclast, which causes the osteoclast to mature and differentiate and ultimately induce bone resorption, leading to calcium leaching out of the bone into the blood. So that's the first way PTH increases blood calcium. The second is it's going to upregulate an apical calcium channel in the late DCT, simply causing reabsorption of calcium out of the urine. The third way is it's going to upregulate one alpha hydroxylase, the PCT of the kidney, converting inactive 25D3 into active 125D3, the latter going to small bowel, increasing calcium absorption. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, multiple endocrine neoplasia men, one wrong fucking answer. And you know, that's wrong because if anything, you'd have a parathyroid adenoma or diffuse four gland hyperplasia causing PTH clearly to be high, not low. Okay, so. I mean, students are a little bit iffy on certain diagnoses. They might get pulled in. I don't think it's too difficult, this answer choice. But MEN1 is going to be uh, parathyroid, as I just said. Number two, pituitary can be any lesion, prolactinoma, classic. And number three, pancreas, Zollinger Ellison syndrome, as an example. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, osteoporosis, wrong fucking answer. We know it's wrong because the dot would be smack dab in the middle of the normal box. Okay, some of you know that, not difficult, but for others here, uh, some of you might think that there must be some disturbance in osteoporosis, such as low calcium. It's not going to happen. Okay, old granny who has uh, low bone density breaks her hip. She's going to have normal serum levels of calcium phosphate, uh, ALP, PTH. That's how it usually is. I should just remark somewhat tangentially that occasionally, okay, occasionally, uh, 2CK can give you a patient with major trauma, bone fractures, where ALP, an isolated increase in ALP can go up if you uh, leak some of that um, ALP from the bone uh, out into the blood, okay? It's a long discussion, but uh, for instance, ALP can normally be elevated when we have bile duct obstruction. If they give you normal direct bilirubin, normal GGT, but an increased ALP in the setting of fractures, that's not a bile duct obstruction. That's just simply ALP leaching out into the bone from the fractures. But as I just said, if you have osteoporosis, uh, you're going to have normal calcium, normal phosphate, ALP, PTH. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, renal cell carcinoma, correct answer. Now, holy shit, what you need to know is that renal cell carcinoma as well as squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, both secrete PTHRP. Now, some students might think I'm being a little bit tricky or gotcha. No, I'm not. This is high yield. This is uh, definitely on the NVMe exams, okay? And it's to my observation, students often simply aren't aware of this factoid, which is that not only is it squamous cell carcinoma of the lung that secretes PTHRP, but renal cell carcinoma does as well. So they don't have to come right out of the gates and say, holy shit, you've got a smoker with flank pain and red urine. They don't have to say that. One thing they can do is just give you a question like this. They say random dude who's 55 and here's a histo of clear cells because you need to know renal cell carcinoma. Uh, the most common variant is, is called clear cell carcinoma. So they'll just show you uh, large uh, vacuous appearing clear cells and they'll say, there's hypercalcemia and there's polycythemia because renal cell carcinoma can secrete PTHRP as well as EPO. Okay, so that's your factoid here. And the last clip I made with the same graph here, the dot was in the same location for metastatic malignancy. Okay, that's really important that you know metastases uh, are one of the most important causes of hypercalcemia. So instead of renal cell carcinoma, we could just have METs, any kind of METs going to bone, dot would be in the same location here, all right, where PTH is suppressed. 
I should probably clarify that as well, that PTHRP is not the same thing as PTH. So they'll, if they give you lab values, you need to know that with uh, real cell carcinoma and with squamous cell carcinoma lung, when you have the PTHRP secretion, it's not the same thing as PTH. So actual endogenous PTH is going to be suppressed. Real quick, vitamin D receptor insensitivity, wrong fucking answer. Now, even if you instantly just aren't really sure what's going on, because this is unusual, I agree. Well, doesn't vitamin D ultimately, ultimately lead to the absorption of calcium from the small bowel, right? So if anything, you know that you're going to have low calcium if vitamin D isn't able to do its job, and then PTH goes up to compensate. So the dot would be in the uh, top left here. Okay, so osteomalacia rickets, they asked that on USMLE. The dot's going to be in the top left. PTH goes up to compensate for the hypocalcemia. And you also need to know the dot will be in the top left if we have renal failure. Okay, because that's going to be secondary hyperparathyroidism, where if the kidney's unable to reabsorb calcium, you can't activate vitamin D into 125 and can't get small bowel absorption of it because the kidney's fucked up. Calcium's low. PTH goes up to compensate. So rickets, Osteomalacia and secondary hyperparathyroidism due to renal failure. Dots in the top left location here. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.